Hi there and welcome to Fluffy Jellyfish. In today's video we're going to be traveling all the way to Munich, Germany where I'm going to be taking on a little vlog adventure of Hellebrand Zoo. The Munich Zoo Hellebrand was founded in 1911 as the first geo zoo worldwide. The animals live according to their geographic distribution in complex communities. If you follow the icons, you'll travel around the world and experience our different habitats. Hellebrand is not a zoo in the classical sense. It is more of a nature preserve with the landscape conservation area of the eyes are meadows inhabited by animals that live in especially large structured enclosures. Thanks to an extensive array of ditches and a natural landscape design, the visitor can enjoy the wonderful and unobstructed view of animals that could normally only be obtained on safari. Reading this description in my local guidebook, I really, really wanted to visit. It sounded amazing and it really lived up to my expectations. I say to this is basically seal the deal with you wanting mice. Look at that one on the log over there. They're all black. They are all black. I wonder yeah. if they're like a certain type of animal. Oh, they're so cute. Can we have mice? There's loads of them though. There's like all over the back as well. Hellebrand is known as the world's first geo zoo. This means that the animals live in their habitats according to where they are geographically located. So if you follow the correct paths, you travel around the globe and experience a whole world of animal communities. I loved experiencing this concept. Environmental education became intrinsic through this layer and while not all the signs were available in English, I was able to still learn just by walking. It was more like wandering around a form of nature preserve than a traditional zoo, as the zoo's designers had made use of ditches and natural landscaping to allow for unobstructed views of the animals in their huge natural enclosures. As we walked around we were really taken by just how beautiful this zoo was and how well designed all the enclosures were. The natural beauty was breathtaking and the habitats for the animals were better than anywhere I visited before. I was so, so impressed. If you're in the Munich area, Hellebrand Zoo is a must visit destination. What are they called? Mark Hor. They've got impressive horns. With well over a hundred different species of animals at Hellebrand Zoo, there are plenty of incredible creatures to see. And as you can see from all my clips, I loved everything that was here. They've got cool shoes on. Where are the Kiang from? They are from Mongolia. Mongolia. So essentially Mongolian donkeys then. Yeah. Tibetan plateau. She's farting. She heard that. <laughs> I never really thought of rhinos as being able to swim. Oh, 
are sloths in those baskets. Uh, I think we should have walked over that way. I think we... We can go back. Well, there's emperors and there's those other ones. I'm not quite sure what they are, actually. I don't know enough about my penguins to know. Looking at your feet. <laughs> Looks like he's trying to fly. He is. He's just trying to fly in the water. Hiya, mate. Oh, big yawn. Or, or are you just... He wants food. I don't... Sorry, I don't have any food. Stop. No, he's out. just yawning. No, he wanted food and then he stalled out. <laughs> Oh, mate, <laughs> that was graceful. <laughs> that is so not graceful. Oh, look at them, though. Do you think that's a mother and cub? For me, the real highlight was seeing the two polar bears. In this moment, standing under the winter sun, inches away from two colossal white bears that were so captivated by their games and so happy playing with one another, I could not help but feel completely euphoric. This was a moment of pure bliss. It was perfect. I'm going to be quiet now and just let you enjoy this moment with me. Where did the other one go? It's around the back of the rock. No, they're like dogs. Yeah, well, try taking one home. What are they actually playing with? It's just a piece of plastic. Bucket. A bucket. Here's an interesting fact about polar bears. Did you know, polar bears have air spaces between the hairs of their coats that trap in their body heat and help to prevent heat loss, which is why they're perfectly adapted to suit their arctic environments. The fur is oily and water repellent, which allows the polar bears to easily shake themselves dry after a swim. Hey, they basically fight how we do. <laughs> He's got such a happy face. Hedwig. Well, Hedwig's a German name, isn't it? Yes. They are fluffy, look at them. Arctic rabbits. How oh, strange. Another ostrich. They're all looking at us. They are all looking at you. I love an alpaca. For round two. This is this is your present. Or actually those big ones there. Oh, okay. Well we'll go back out and see it. You think he's like a big cat and he just looks at the birds all day. 
No, I think he's like a lion who looks at the children all day. No, he was following the child. It's still amazing to think that they can feel everything that you do on their back. I know. They just look like big rocks. Good climbers. Yeah. Oh. Animals. <laughs> My mum's favourite animals. Elephants. Sort of like a point, isn't it? It's a bit. Yeah, well, it's to help them. Sideways. Help them hook on. I suppose it's because of the trunk, wasn't it? Yeah. We see you using that stick to scratch its head. Oh yeah. That's obviously its favourite stick, it's just like holding it in between its trunk. <laughs> that to me shows understanding though. You see, look, it's setting it up. I wonder why it's trying to break it. To eat? to eat it, maybe, yeah, I guess. Oh. As you look at it, it's setting it up properly every time. Alright, it's gonna eat it. Mm -hmm. I guess trying to get to the soft bit inside. Probably, yeah. Got such a weird little face. What's it called? Palace cat. It's probably pissed off. It's people keep saying it's got a weird little face. But oh, but cute though. Conservation, education, protection and awareness are a huge part of any zoo and Helen Brown is making great waves in all of these areas. They have a conservation centre which you can visit on site and it is aptly located next to the orangutans enclosure. The centre provides an important forum for sharing knowledge and fostering discussion. Visitors to the zoo have an opportunity to learn about a wide range of conservation projects as well as the importance of biological diversity and the role of zoos in international wildlife conservation through a permanent exhibition and a series of special exhibitions and lectures. You can learn more about these exhibitions by visiting the link in my description below. Hellebrand Zoo also has a team of volunteer wildlife ambassadors that are situated in mobile information kiosks around the zoo. These information stands allow visitors to ask questions and engage in the zoo's conservation projects and their commitment to biodiversity. As well as learning what we can all do as individuals to support wildlife conservation and the protection of our natural environment. While we were there we did speak to a couple of these stands but I'm a little bit socially anxious. <laughs> we didn't do that too much but I could see from what they were saying to other people these are fantastic resources for the zoo and I'd quite like to see things like this in more zoos. What's in here? Oh, iguana. Iguana. Rhinoceros iguana. While visiting these stands and the conservation centre, I learned that Hellebrand Zoo is a key participant in the European Endangered Species programmes. 
If you're interested, you can learn more about what species they're helping to conserve by visiting the link in my description below. As well as working with species close to home, there are important supporters of international conservation projects, including conserving the Humboldt penguin, penguin? The Humboldt penguin, the Sumatran orangutan, and the polar bear. They're called Vakura. Pardon? They're called Vakura. Zoos like this are important because they are centres for environmental education and conservation. And as it says on their website, they are committed to inspiring visitors to be active participants in preserving biodiversity and conserving the natural world. And this is so important and so key to why zoos and animal centres really matter. I was really impressed with all the projects that they're involved with and I'm going to leave links to their website in my description below so you can check out as well. He's a big boy. Have I inadvertently joined the photography team? I'm pretty posing. I was really impressed by Hellebron Zoo. It's by far the best zoo that I've visited so far and I cannot praise it higher than that. It was just glorious. If you're in or visiting the Munich area, make sure it's top of your itinerary. You will not regret a trip here. If you want to see more videos like this from us in the future, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the little notification bell so you don't miss an update. And make sure to drop me a comment below to let me know what your favourite animal was from this video. I definitely know that mine was the polar bears.
that's all for now fluffy jellyfish out